Our guest in this segment, Senator Jason Barrett. JB, good morning to you. Good morning, guys. Uh, thanks for having me. Sorry I couldn't be there in person this morning. Did you have a chance to watch the, as Corey Roman called it, the vice presidential debate last night? <laughs> I watched, um, I think, about an hour and a half of it uh, last night before I turned it off. You are as astute as anybody we've had on the program in, in analyzing a political field. What do you make of this uh, group of folks on the stage last night, obviously without Donald Trump? Well, I, I appreciate the compliment. I don't know what qualifies me for that. But uh, uh, I, the, the debate, I mean, the, the whole uh, purpose of the debate seems to be uh, fairly irrelevant to me when you have uh, the front runner at polling well over 50 percent uh, in every poll. Um I just don't know what you gauge by watching uh, eight other people who, uh, at this point, have really no uh, chance. Uh, and certainly, um, you know, as long as Donald Trump is in the race, uh, there's only 40 percent to be divided up between these eight uh, folks that were qualified for the debate and, and a few others. And um, I, I just I just don't see how there's any momentum for anybody after this, because Again, if Donald Trump were out of the race, then you could see where his 50-plus percent was going to break and these debates would mean something. But um, I just – I just, I think they're irrelevant, to be quite honest. And uh, I think that if, if, if you're a supporter of any of the eight that were on the stage last night, I don't – I think that you're probably happy with your, your, pers- your candidate's performance. Um, I don't think anybody did anything to, to really stand out, to, uh, to, to, to really – increase their momentum or their their profile and i don't think anybody really heard it much last night i, I, I for my personal opinion um i cannot stand to listen to a debate uh mike pence's performance in a debate uh he just uh, he, he just refuses um to allow other people to speak uh, he, he ignores the rules of the debate not that that all of them fall into the t i'm certainly not saying that but um it, it just it, I want to pull my hair out listening to Mike Pence in a debate. <laughs> so I think, John, you you said the same thing when you came in, that he pretty much ignored the timer. Yeah, I thought Mike Pence tried to be belligerent, and he's so milk toast he can't pull it off. It, <laughs> it was, I thought it was embarrassing for him, actually. And, you know, on the, on the, the, the Trump machine, and obviously the polls are what the polls are, I don't know. I've got a lot of Republican friends, and— uh, a lot of Trump supporting uh, Republican friends, and, and I am among them, actually. I voted for Trump twice. And uh, I don't know of anybody, myself included, who is happy that he's going to be the nominee if, in fact, the way it, it's it's going. I think a, a lot of folks feel aggrieved from the way he's been treated. I think that, that he has been treated miserably. But at the end of the day, an election is about getting elected. And I, I think we all kind of, most Republicans I know cringe that he's the guy, which is the opening I think that he might not be. I think it's a long time, a lot of primaries between now and, and the nomination. So I'm, I'm really, I don't think he's going to be the nominee. Well, he's up 41 points the last I'd seen within the Republican uh, 41, field. 41, you know, it's... <laughs> That's a pretty. It, it was better than the Trump Biden debate. Oh my goodness! You talk about talking over top of each other and ignoring mm-hmm. the rules. Those were those were painful as well. Jason, let's talk prisons because I know you have a lot of involvement in this, and you've worked hard on a lot of the legislation and uh, picking up as much uh, information as you can regarding our system here in West Virginia and specifically the Eastern uh, Regional Jail. We have some solutions at this point, do we not? Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, we, we've talked a lot about uh, this issue and, and specifically pay increases. And we had a follow-up um, meeting uh, on Monday uh, uh, with my counterpart in the House, uh, David Kelly, who is the chair of the uh, jails committee um, in the House, and uh, along with folks from corrections, uh, folks from the Department of uh, Personnel so that we can make sure that we get this raise implemented uh, appropriately. Everyone seems to be on the same page. So, um, you know, I think we're, we're certainly moving in the right direction. Part of this legislation included uh, the ability uh, for uh, additional raises uh, to those folks that are working in um, uh, facilities that have uh, critical needs. Uh, because of the shortage is, is, is so high. So, you know, I think that the uh, Eastern Regional Jail is always going to qualify as, as one of those areas simply because of, of 
our struggle to, to retain correction officers in the eastern panhandle. Certainly, it's an issue all over the all over the state, but it's it's even uh, a bigger issue here. So I, I think that we'll, those folks will always qualify and, and be able to get an additional bump. And you know, I, I've heard it be mentioned as a as a kind of run around or end around, however you want to phrase that, for locality pay. And maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know. It, it, it's certainly not just limited to the eastern panhandle. It's uh, it's specific to any uh, facility, correctional facility that has um, uh, critical need and 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 has uh, a certain level of of uh, vacancies in their staff. We've touched on the relationship between the city and the county, and specifically, and as we addressed it, Martinsburg and Berkeley County, but of course it goes beyond that. And on Facebook, you posted a correction as to the five-day uh, limit. Can you get into that a little bit with us? Well, it was an issue that, that actually the House pushed um, uh, pretty hard this year uh, during regular session, and and that was, and we actually in the Senate uh, amended that down to one day, And it, but, but that bill was voluntary. And, of course, you know, the cities aren't going to voluntarily send money to the county for the jail bill. And uh, the bill passed because that was the vehicle that we used to put the per diem formula into the House bill when we were getting down to the last final day or two. That was the only vehicle that we had uh, in the Senate Gov Org Committee uh, to be able to put uh, my formula in for per diem. So we ran that in a House bill. But um, the uh, the issue is that I, I think that, that uh, well, counties have a concern that Cities are, um, you know, kind of, and I'm not, I'm not picking on any particular city in this area or anywhere else. I'm just telling you feedback that, that I've heard from um, some folks in counties, and that is that municipalities cherry pick uh, when they want a particular charge to go through municipal court. Uh, when someone's going to spend overnight in jail, uh, then they then they charge them with a state offense so that the county pays for it. And when it's a uh, um, when it's a charge that, that results in a fine to go to the municipality, then it gets run through municipal court. And I think that's um, really the, the reason for legislation like this. Uh, the way that it will work is, is somewhat clunky, I think. Um, I, I, maybe we can come up with a better way to, to administer it. But, but essentially, the, the county is still going to pay, um, pay the fee, the, 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 the per diem amount, um, it's just that they will then send an invoice to the municipality. The municipality will be, by code, responsible to, to pay uh, for certain offenses um, up the first five nights. And currently, if somebody's arrested in Jefferson County and they get sent ultimately to the ERJ, does Berkeley County pay that jail bill or does Jefferson County pay that jail bill? Yes, Jefferson does. All right. Does any of that interworking change? Not, no. I don't think so. I think, I mean, I don't, they would, they're going to go to the Eastern Regional Jail. I mean, there are regional jails all over the state. I mean, most counties don't have their own jails. So, um, you know, the, 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 the county in which the jail is, uh, is, is in that I don't know that we could, we could find or we could bill a county just because the jail is in their county. Mm -hmm. I think it has to be, you know, we, there's been a lot of talk about arresting authority, whether that's, that's a way to bill, uh, municipalities and you know the state police has arresting authority college campuses have you know some arresting authority and you know the state police in some areas of the state are are really subsidizing the sheriff's department more than i think they ought to i think some of these counties should should pull their weight a lot more than they are as it relates to their law enforcement um, and i don't think it would be right to 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 bill the the state police uh, because they're arresting authority um, in a county where they may only have two or three different deputies, um, and we're going to build the, the state police for that. I don't, I don't think that's appropriate. So that's that's one of the flaws with with doing it based on arresting authority. Well, I have you and Matt that's Harvey important. here. The, the, my next question on that is, and then I'll give up the microphone. I promise. Is if if you get arrested and you're not from Berkeley County, is it where you were arrested or where you are a resident from as to who gets billed? Uh, well, no, it's 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 where you're arrested. You know, so if you're arrested in Berkeley County, and you're a, you're from Maryland. I mean, certainly we're not going to bill that to Washington County. Um, right. I mean, Berkeley County is going to be on the hook for that. But but within West Virginia, if you're a Jefferson County resident, but you commit a crime in Berkeley County, Berkeley County gets billed for your stay at the ERJ. If you are com if you commit the crime in Berkeley County and you are arrested by uh, you're arrested by the arresting authority in Berkeley County, then yes, Berkeley County is going to pay for it. Good, Matt Harvey. 
Well, you know, Jason, the this, or excuse me, Senator Barrett. Um, <laughs> Senator Jason. You, you know, the, the 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 sheriff's department. I want to push back on that a little bit. That 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 you know, more law enforcement responsibility should go on the sheriffs. They have the by code and by West Virginia Constitution. They are first and foremost there to collect the taxes and provide process for the court systems. And, and then if they have any extra resources, then they can do law enforcement. The structure is that the state police would be would be the the main and uh, law enforcement agency in the state. So, you know, I, I kind of disagree with with your your take on that. And and I'll and I'll point out that you know the counties aren't resting in the name of the county. They're arresting these people in the name of the state of West Virginia, and somehow. We're doing all this for West Virginia, but the counties and the, the municipalities now are having to to pay for the incarceration for a crime against the state. So, you know, I, I don't know if that's really a question or just a comment. Well, and, and my point was that you have to take a county like Berkeley County, who has over 60 some deputies. Uh, we have very little state police presence uh, in this area, uh, in my view. And, and when I've talked to the former uh, state police superintendent and I, I get critical of them, of them, of their allocation, because there are counties in southern West Virginia uh, that have far less population, that have uh, a much larger trooper uh, presence there. Uh, and the reason that they cited in the past was, well, that's because there are only X number of deputies there. They don't have the coverage. You know, we have to ensure that the safety of the people, uh, if the county doesn't, um, you know, if the county doesn't have a robust um, or ample uh, uh, sheriff's department. And so my point was, if we move this to arresting authority where the state police would be on the hook uh, for paying for, um, you know, nights in jail, uh, then, then you know, the problem becomes, again, these counties now are, are being rewarded through state trooper allocation for not having uh, ample uh, uh, deputy sheriffs. And now we're going to reward them again by not making the county pay the jail bill, but sending it off to the arresting authority, which in this case would be the state police. That that was what my point okay, was. Okay, I understand. And, and I, you know, as the prosecutor, you know, I know our our sheriff's department has thirty some deputies and and five troopers, where it used to be, you know, fifth, ten, fifteen years ago there was fifteen troopers, and now we're down to five in Jefferson County, and it's 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 for the reasons that you say. Um. Did you lose your train of thought? No, well, yeah, I did. But I, <laughs> so anyway, I was thinking about those Tudor's biscuits. Um, that I want to talk about. But well, Jim Klein's you know, freaking a, out about look, when that's going to open here. So well, I, he's not the only one. So <laughs> hold on, Jim. I got you. Uh, what? Wh why doesn't the state just take over the jail bill altogether and solve this problem? Good question. Well, I, I think that. You know that sounds great, uh, but I think that you would end up with a lot more people um, uh, in jail. And, and when the county doesn't have some skin in the game, uh, when uh, when we're just going to allow people to be locked up, I mean, I, I think that you see the Eastern Panhandle counties have done a really good job with day report center, uh, with drug courts, with all these things that that allow uh, the recovery resource center uh, to allow not only you know to reduce the, the bill and, and provide people help. Uh, and then when that incentive is gone, uh, that jail bill incentive is gone, and we're just going to put it all onto the state, then what incentive have we provided to counties then uh, to really help people and do things to reduce their jail bill? I think you know, what, if, if you took the jail bills now and you, you added them up uh, for the entire – every county into the state, uh, what that number is, and, and then you would look at if the, if the state paid for it uh, outright, uh, I think that number would go through the roof because there would be zero incentive. Uh, for counties uh, to, um, you know, to, to have uh, alternative sentencing uh, to help people get back on their feet uh, and to reduce the amount of people that are incarcerated. Well, so I, I think that there has to be some skin in the game uh, for counties. We're, we're not going to get to a position um, where uh, the state pays that entire jail bill. That is that is not going to be part of the discussion or the equation. So the, the regional jails roughly provides Bur uh, Morgan, Jefferson, and Berkeley with about 1,200 beds uh, for for misdemeanors and pretrial detainees. Um, you know, prior to the regional jail system, 
how many beds do you think were available if in the Jefferson County Jail and the and the Berkeley County Jail and the Morgan County Jail? Maybe a hundred. Oh, I don't. I don't. I mean, my only experience of jail is a tour of Eastern Regional, so I don't. I don't have much knowledge of of the amount of beds and the, and the circumstances within a jail. Well, I, I've only been a tour, but I, I don't know the answer to that. Well, and that was uh, several years ago, and our population was was much less. Sure, so I, I, I can't question. But but my point is that that the regional jail system gave these areas more the, the counties more beds to fill and when you do that you're going to fill them and 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 in, in a lot of cases overfill them is there any thought of maybe undoing the regional jail system i don't think any county wants to undo the regional jail system and <laughs> have their own jails and go back to that i don't i don't think that any county is going to advocate for that i mean you, you think that the, the fifty-four dollars and eighty-eight cents that they're paying per night now uh, is expensive. Um, go, go manage your own jail and, and provide for all that. See if you can do that for fifty-four dollars a night. I highly doubt it. You know, for a taxpaying citizen, it's it's kind of distressing to hear that the number of beds drives how many people are are getting jailed. It, it seems to me that just looking at at how this has unfolded in the last few months, I've been paying attention to it. Um, we've we've got obviously a big problem with with the jail system going from uh staffing to a number of other problems last weekend there were protests i didn't witness this i just read news reports about it um outside the jail that are talking about horrific conditions inside things like no toilet paper people not being allowed to shower for 14 days inmates or prisoners i'm not sure what they're called at that and, level and there is an active lawsuit involving all that too and and people being allowed to die sort of a a, a careless indifference toward um the the condition of of inmates i'm wondering if we just need to first of all jail few, fewer people and take a look at this as a larger problem i don't personally i mean the, the, being a, a, a corrections officer is certainly not something that would be on my list of, of preferred job uh, opportunities so i don't know even with the um the the, the non-locality pay whatever we're calling it um I, I don't do we really think that's going to solve the problem I mean, this seems to be a systemic issue from how many people are being sent to jail and then how they're treated and the fact that we can't take proper care of them we kind of need to do a reset don't we well i don't know i mean just because there's a lawsuit doesn't mean that the and the charges in that lawsuit that doesn't mean that that's accurate or, or and i think there's a lot more to that story and i think uh, a lot of that is fabricated and and um exaggerated uh based on things that i've heard um so i don't I, just because uh, there's a lawsuit and somebody wrote an article about it doesn't mean it's true um you know are, are there bad conditions in a jail at times i'm sure there are um um, you know, it's 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 jail. It's not it's not the Holiday Inn. Um, uh, but but with that being said, people should not be mistreated, and I, I would certainly never advocate for that. And I, I, again, I think these charges are, are extremely exaggerated. But uh, I, and I can't to, to the point of uh, saying that because there are more beds, we put more people in them. I you know I that's not a legislative function. I mean I. I don't know that that any deputy sheriff or any state trooper goes out and says, you know what, I can arrest more people because I got more beds today, or or when you know they go respond to a domestic violence charge and somebody's you know somebody's uh, you know assaulted physically assaulted someone that they say, well, I got room for them, let me go ahead and arrest them. I don't think that comes into the to the equation for for a law enforcement officer who is who is doing their job. So I. And I don't know that prosecutors did. And obviously, there's one on, as a host today, Matt. And I don't know that, that they prosecute based on how many beds are in jail. Does the no, arresting officer make the decision whether or not somebody goes to jail, or that's not that's aren't those two different transactions? Arrest and whether or not to go to jail. Well, well, I mean, no, no they they, they have it. discretion to to issue a summons or 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 write a ticket for some offenses and. So that they do have some, they do have some discretion, certainly. And then, and then the magistrate sets the bond. They, the magistrate may ask them, you know, questions about the person that they've arrested, and uh, you know that can have an influence on whether they get out that night or not. Jason, final word is yours. 
Well, one of the things that um, Matt just alluded to is, is with magistrates, and there have been, and I've been critical of magistrates from all over the state, and I know some people think it's just an Eastern Panhandle, but there's a couple instances here recently, uh, not in Berkeley or Jefferson County, but, but, but someone was arrested for felony strangulation and rape uh, and was let out on their own personal recognizance, and I think that is uh, completely inappropriate, an, an out-of-state individual, uh, by the way, uh, and I think that is uh, really brings in um, – uh, issues and concerns uh, as it relates to public safety. I think that's foolish. There are, there's another uh, magistrate who very recently um, did cash-only bonds for 29 uh, people in a row because he knew that they could not uh, come up with the cash, made them stay in jail for two or three nights for extremely minor offenses that they should not have spent two or three nights in jail. And, um, you know, I think there has to be some bail reform uh, because I think it's the only way we're going to get some of these magistrates in line. Jason, thanks so much for your uh, appearance here today. And finally, uh, when will tutors open? (laughs) Jim Klein. Very soon. I will let you know. Month? Week? Uh, Um. Somewhere in that ballpark, yes. So I'm, I'm actually, the reason I couldn't join you today is I have to deliver the kitchen doors down to the site today so they can get installed. So we're, we're getting close. We'll get off here and get to it. Uh, people need their biscuits, man. You got to get on. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Right. Thanks, guys. Take Appreciate care. it.